how do I learn how much salt I need for a 70.3 so I don't get muscle cramps or, well, I won't repeat the last part, but yeah. So you don't have GI distress. We'll put it that way, Nick. Um, so there's a couple different ways. Um, you can get very specific. There are tests. Gatorade's got their patch, I think. I don't think it's uh, widely available for commercial use. I think you can sign up to be a beta tester, possibly. Uh, but there are different outfits that will take a vial of your sweat and actually test it to see what the makeup is, to see how much sweat you're losing over time. Now, the other ways to do it is I have a sweat rate uh, calculator I've developed over the years with different athletes. So in their workouts, they actually tell me how much they weighed before and after each workout and what they took in um, fluid-wise. So we can figure out kind of what their dehydration is uh, per hour, you know, depending on the weather conditions, depending on if it was a run or a bike, um, you know, heat, humidity, all that good stuff. So we get a kind of accurate picture over time of how much they get depleted, either doing a bike ride or doing a run or, or a combination of the two. So at least you can get a good idea of what your fluid loss is, so you can get an idea of what to replace. Um, and there's literature out there that there, there's it's, there's a spectrum of it. Um, so I would uh, look for some literature, and, and I can look for that too and kind of post it on this comment um, just to get a good roundabout number if you don't want to do exact testing out there. Because uh, tests can run, you know, $150, $200 I have, from what I've seen out there. So you can get that detailed information. Um, but some of us are salty sweaters. Some of us are not you know, not salty sweaters. Personally, I sweat profusely. And when I've done events and looked at pictures afterwards, you can see salt just, you know, on my, my uh, tri triathlon, you know, suit or tri gear or whatever I'm wearing that day. And, and it's just obvious. I sweat a lot and it is very salty. Um, so uh, Gatorade Endurance, I believe, is on most courses for Ironman events. Um, that has helped me tremendously on the run uh, to stay uh, in a good levels of salt. So it's a good combination of, you know, salts and electrolytes and everything else that you're taking in and also fluids. So if you get too much and not enough fluids to push it around, that can cause an issue too where you have GI distress and you're kind of on the other spectrum. Um, you can also get um, hypnotremia where you've got too much fluid in your system and not enough, you know, electrolytes and minerals and everything else, potassium, all that good stuff. So it's it's a fine line. And like I said, you need to kind of pay attention in training, what your fluid loss is, so you get kind of a good handle on that. So then you can kind of play with that as you move along of what's the right fluid intake that I need to get to be two to three percent maximum dehydrated coming off the bike so I'm ready for the run because once you start the run probably not gonna be able to take as many solids and you're gonna be able to take fluids and you're gonna have to switch to a fluid that supplies that salt that potassium and all those other electrolytes and minerals that you're gonna need to finish that race so it's a trial and error for the most athletes uh, to figure out products that they could use possibly um, you know, there's tons out there. There's base salt. There's, like I said, Gatorade um, endurance formula. It's a little bit more salty than others. Um, there's other uh, drink products out there. There's so many different things you could be using out there. And kind of one of my recommended in some other comments is right now there's plenty of products out there that you can get kind of trial packs out of and, and test them out and see how that goes for you. So, like I said, I would test them in, in your workouts, in your long workouts. I know, you know, here in the States, we're starting to get into winter, so it's hard to go outside and kind of push the envelope and, and see what it's like once you get dehydrated and you need that salt. Um, but in your longer workouts, you know, if you got your pain cave, turn up the heater and see how that goes and, and do some sweating and try some different products out there. Um, again, everybody's different. So you can go out there and read as much information as you want, um, but you may be on one complete end of the spectrum or the other, or you could be right in the middle. So you kind of need to to see what the general rule of thumb is and, and then kind of apply, you know, for, for larger athletes, it might be a different situation for middle sized athletes. It might be one and for smaller athletes, it might be a different situation. So I would definitely, if, if you really want to know, you can go out there and get it tested. Um, if you um, kind of want a general rule of thumb, you can go out there and find information just on general studies and tests of what, you know, salt loss is over time for endurance athletes. There's plenty of studies out there. So hopefully that kind of helps you out and gets you going in the right direction so you can kind of get that fine-tuned information for your specific situation. So any other questions, put them in the comments and happy training.